We're now going to proceed on to the analysis of frame structures. We're going to begin with a statically determinate frame and then move on to statically indeterminate frames. So the structure we're going to consider in this example is simple frame just consider with two members. We have a column and let's make this thicker. We have a column connected into a beam. The support conditions we're going to apply to this are a pin joint at the bottom and we're going to call this A, B and C and we're going to have a roller supporting point C. So only supported in the Y direction. And finally we're going to apply a point load at the joint between the column and the beam point B. Now the important thing with the frame problems is we're going to consider that the joint at B is perfectly rigid. And the consequence of this is even if the beam is subjected to load, the angle between the two members, in this case a right angle, the angle between them will remain the same. But even in other situations where we might have two members joined together at a different angle, maybe this is 120 degrees, if the beam the structure were to rotate and let's do it the structure were to rotate the angle here the original angle and the rotated angle will remain exactly the same so if it's 120 degrees initially it will remain 120 degrees later so we're assuming perfect rigidity of the joints unless and this might happen in other examples where we denote that we have a pin at the joint. And it will always be noted by a blob like this. Okay, but in this case, we're assuming that the joint at B is perfectly rigid. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do with the qualitative analysis of this beam is determine the directions of the reaction forces. and we have the point load at B. We cannot have any horizontal loading at C. So therefore we know the horizontal reaction at A must point to the left. Okay, now what we're going to do is again Having a look at this situation is imagine what would happen if we were to remove the roller at C and take moments about point A. If that were to happen, our beam would want to rotate as a rigid body in a clockwise direction. And the only way that we can stop that deformation from happening is if we have an upwards reaction at point C. So it therefore follows having a look at the sum of the forces in the Y direction. If we have an upwards force at C, then it follows that A must have a reaction pointing downwards. So now we have our free body diagram for the system. We're now going to move on to our points of certainty and therefore our deflected shape. So first thing we're going to do is draw the undeflected shape and add to that the points of certainty that we know. So we know from the pin support at A that we have no movement in the X or Y directions at point A. Due to the application of the load at point B, we know that point B must move 
a short distance to the right. And we're going to assume that the beam member across the top is, in an axial sense, very rigid compared to bending. So it's going to keep its original length or is not going to deform it a great deal compared to the deformation that we would expect on the bending. So as a result of this, we have three points of certainty. The other piece of information we know is that the joint at B must be perfectly rigid, or we're assuming that it's perfectly rigid. So if we were to draw a straight line, this would mean that the 90 degree angle would go like that. But we have no way in which the deflection would return back to zero at C. So we know that that's not possible. So for this case, we know that the deflection must return to C. And therefore, our deflection must happen like this. I know it's not been drawn particularly well. But this angle here remains at 90 degrees. And therefore, we get curvature in this element here. So we're going to have tension on the bottom face of the beam and tension on the right-hand face of the column. And this helps us straight away in drawing our beat bending moment diagram. So we'll draw the bending moment diagram right alongside. And our entire structure is only subjected to point loads. So our bending moment diagrams must be linear in variation, straight lines. And we have on the column, we have a point load at the base and a linear variation and tension on the right hand side. So we draw our bending moment on the right hand side. So that must be our bending moment in the column. And likewise for the beam, we have tension on the bottom face and we must have zero bending moment at the pinned joint or the roller joint and a linear variation of the bending moment across the beam. So that would be our bending moment diagram. Some people prefer to explode the structure into the individual elements, the beam and the column and draw the bending moments diagram separately because they look neater. However, well, most structural engineers are quite used to bending moment diagrams has drawn all on one diagram, even with the overlaps. One important point to notice, so that the joint itself is in rotational equilibrium. Let's just draw that joint for a second. The moment coming from the beam must be equal to the moment coming from the column. What that means on the bending moment diagram is that this moment here is equal to this moment here. 